Hello friends, I bring greetings from the youth department, Nagaland Baptist Church Council through our Lord Jesus Christ. It was our desire to organize a mega event program for young people across Baptist churches in Nagaland and beyond. But due to the pandemic, we are not able to gather physically. Therefore, the planning committee with the approval of the NBCC executive committee decided to go on virtual. The Kingdom Search 2021 has been renamed as Kingdom Search Movement with the tag to mobilize the youth of Nagaland to equip them in kingdom values and proclaim the kingdom of God in all spheres of life. We have learned shops and life shops where seven mountains of influence shall be taught by seven influential Christian personalities and three others through their successful life stories. We have a dynamic preacher in the person of Dr. Ketoser Aniu Kivitsusa, who speaks the hearts of young people and also impact with the word of God. Over and above, we have many other interesting items. The Kingdom Search Movement is a clarion call to all the Christian youth to reclaim the truth in their lives, embrace our commission in the world, and ushering in God's kingdom and His will on earth. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may we receive the gospel of truth and submit our lives to Jesus Christ and live out the faith in the public square. As a result, God's reign and rule will extend into all spheres of influence. Lastly, I sincerely thank everyone who made this celebration a successful one. Enjoy the program and be blessed. Amen. With what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all things on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shed. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has gladly chosen to give you the kingdom. He rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us safe into the kingdom of His dear Son, by whom we are set free, that is, our sins are forgiven. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. The kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we launch the Kingdom Search movement, the movement must become a lifestyle. We must commit ourselves to live kingdom values and kingdom culture. We are commissioned to the world to live out our faith, impacting our world and our environment. We are in the world and yet not of the world. And that is the difference believers have to impact the world with our faith. The knowledge of knowing the truth must overtake what the world thinks is right. That the kingdom culture, kingdom values we are talking about in this movement must live in all of us. 
the desired outcome of kingdom search movement must be uphold by all the youth in our context. First, youth discipled in the biblical teaching of the kingdom. That's the role of the leaders. Second, youth operating in kingdom standard. That is the part, the role the youth must play today. Third, youth commissioned for redemptive kingdom purpose. That is the impacting role we all must play. All these three put together catch the vision and purpose of the kingdom surge movement. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. As we launch the kingdom surge movement, my prayer and my blessing is that you will all be immensely blessed. God bless you all. Amen.
about the kingdom of God. Jesus said, It is as if a man should scatter seeds on the ground, and should sleep by night, and rise by day, and the seeds should sprout and grow, and he himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, and then the head, and then the full grain in the head. And when the grain ripens, he immediately puts in the sickle, because harvest has come. And then Jesus asked, To what should we liken the kingdom of God, and with what parable should we picture it with? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown in the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on earth. But when it is sown and when it grows, it becomes greater than all herbs, shooting its large branches out so that the birds of the air can nest in its shadows and shade. When it comes to the kingdom of God, you and I are called to partner with him, to do what it is that we do best, to the best of our abilities. And when we do our part, He is the one that provides everything that is necessary and needed to grow His kingdom, to grow His word, and to grow the gospel of Christ into all the nations of the earth. I want to begin by asking you, what is your greatest ambition? What are you looking for in life? What is your number one priority? What are you seeking first in your life? You know, in the book of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus talks about three things that people are looking for in life. Three things that are the number one priorities of people in life generally. First, he says that for many people, their greatest ambition, their number one priority is the praise of men or popularity before people. This is what people are looking for. In chapter 6, verse 1, But, he says, beware of this. Beware of practicing your good works before other people in order to be seen by men. There is nothing wrong as such about wanting to be popular, or there is nothing wrong as such about wanting to have a good name, or to please other people. But if we make this our number one ambition, if we are seeking for this first in life, whether it is in real life or in social media life, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, the number of likes that we are trying to garner or the number of fans that we want in life, if this is our number one priority, then there is an attendant danger. And the danger that attends to this number one priority of wanting to please other people, please men, always is the danger of hypocrisy. And Jesus says that hypocrites, they like to go around and do good things. And as they do their good things, they would sound their trumpets in synagogues, in other places, in the streets. It, today, it would be on social media, in newspapers so that other people would see our good deeds and praise us and tell us, oh, he's such a wonderful man, he's such a generous man, and so on and so forth. Or when we pray, Jesus says, don't be like the hypocrites. Don't go around praying in churches and synagogues and in public places and street corners where people can see you and just go and say, wow, what a holy man. Be careful about making popularity or pleasing men your number one priority. The second danger that Jesus talks about, the danger that is the greatest ambition of other people or many people, or the greatest ambition for many other people is the ambition of money. This applies to most of us in life. Jesus says there is a danger to this. You know, the Bible is not against money as such. The Bible is not against rich people as such. What the Bible is against is the Bible is against making money your number one priority. 
greed. The Bible is against greed. And it is not just the rich people who are greedy. As far as I, can, as far as I know, there are many rich people who are not greedy. But there are many poor people who are very greedy too. So greed does not just apply to the rich. It can apply even to poor people. But Jesus says, do not make money your number one priority. In chapter 6, verse 24, he says, you cannot serve two masters. You must either hate one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. And he says, you cannot serve both God and money. Like I was saying, Jesus is not against money. Jesus is not against money in the hand. What Jesus is against is money in the heart. Jesus is not against us using money or let money serving us. What he is against is money using us and us serving money. But if we make making money or becoming rich our number one priority, there is an attendant danger. That danger is idolatry. We start worshiping money and not God. So the first ambition that many people have is the ambition to be pleasing before men. The second ambition is the possession of money. The first danger is hypocrisy. The second danger is idolatry. But thirdly, there's another ambition that people have, and Jesus talks of this. And this is the ambition or the number one priority of the provision of materials. Trying to meet our needs, what we will eat, what we will wear, what we will drink, thinking about our body. And Jesus says, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink. Do not be anxious about your body, what you will put on. Life is more important than food and the body more important than clothing. It's interesting what Jesus does not say here. Jesus does not say, do not think about what you will eat or wear or drink. He does not say, do not plan about your material needs. He does not say, do not work for your needs, your material needs and wants. He does not even say, do not invest for your material needs or, or wants. He does not say, do not save for your material needs or wants. He says, do not worry. Do not worry. Do not be anxious. And this is the, the third attendant danger with this great ambition, anxiety. If the first da danger is hypocrisy, if the second one is idolatry, the third danger is anxiety. And anxiety or worry about our lives, needs, and wants they eat us away. So Jesus is warning us against these great three ambitions that most of us or most people of the world have. Instead, he says, instead of making this your number one priority, or one of these your number one priority, or all of this your number one priorities, or th your number three priorities, he says, seek first, but seek first. Make priority number one, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Make that your number one priority. Well, what does it mean to seek first? The kingdom of God. What does the kingdom of God mean? What is the kingdom of God? Well, it means several things. First of all, for there to be a kingdom, there has to be a king. And if we are talking about the kingdom of God, that means we are saying that God is king. And many of us, we need to learn this because mo most times we want God in our little pockets or ghettos or corners of our lives. He does not rule over our lives completely. But if God is to be God, and if we are to make God 
God in our lives, then he has to be king in our lives. And God becomes king in our lives when we come to Jesus and accept him as our Savior and as our Lord. And to, for there to be a kingdom, there has to be a rule. But it's very interesting in the ancient world and even in today's world, with other kings and other rulers, they conquer, they defeat, they dominate, and then they rule. But with the God of the Bible, it is different. God saves. God rescues his people. God rescued his people out of Egypt. And he wanted to be their king. He liberates, he redeems them. And he wants to be their king, although they refuse. In the same way, Jesus redeems us from our sin forgives us of our sins, frees us from our sins, and then he rules over us, our desires to rule over us. There's that little poem that says, other gods were strong, but you were weak. Other gods, other kings, they rode, but you stumbled to a throne. That is the rule of God's kingdom. Thirdly, for there to be a kingdom, there has to be a people. And who are the people? It is we, people, comprising Jews and Gentiles, comprising people from all over the world who have put their trust in Jesus and who are willing to come under the rule of God. But fourthly, for there to be a kingdom, there has to be a domain or a, or, or a sphere I've been thinking for a while uh, about this. You know, when we come to think of it, there are only four things that we have been given in life. Think about it. Four things. The first thing is energy. We have been given energy or power. Two, we have been given time. Three, we have been given space. And four, we have been given matter. Energy, space, time, and matter. That's all it is, basically. And we are called to use our energy, use our time in uh, and around the space and matter and, and with the matter that we have been given. But in Mark 1, verse 15, when Jesus walks into the scene and speaks and announces or talks for the first time publicly, he says, the time is fulfilled. Time, the kingdom of God, power, energy of God, is at hand. It, has, it is now accessible on earth. When Jesus comes into this world, he invades our energy, our time, our space, and our matter. God's kingdom is not of another sphere, what we call a purely spiritual sphere. You know, in John 18, verse 36, Jesus, when Pilate asked him, Jesus said to Pilate, My kingdom is not of this world. When he says, My kingdom is not of this world, he was not saying that his kingdom belonged to another sphere and that his kingdom has no influence, no impact, no implications whatsoever for our so-called secular lives. No. When he said that, he was talk, saying that his kingdom had another source. He says, it is from above. My kingdom is not from this world, it is from above. His kingdom has a different source and it has a different strategy. He, he goes on to say, my kingdom is not of this world, else my servants would fight. So Jesus' kingdom has a different source. The source is God. And it has a different strategy, not the strategy of manipulation or violence or, or lies that, that is common in this world. It has a different strategy of service, of truth. But it will impact our real spheres of life. And this kingdom has come. And this kingdom wants to come in our lives. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come in my life. Let your kingdom and your will be done through my life. That is what kingdom search should be. Seek first the kingdom of God. Make that your number one priority. Seek his righteousness first. The righteousness that comes from God. The righteousness of Christ that clothes us. Because in and of ourselves, we are not righteous. We don't have it in us. And that is why we come to Christ and God clothes us with his own righteousness. And through that, we go out into the world seeking to bring about the righteousness of God. Righteousness that is by God's standards, not by the world's standards. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you.